everyone, welcome to this week's ABBA English video. My name is Marion and in this video I'm going to be introducing you to some common phrases that you might hear in a debate. Okay, this video is for those upper intermediate and advanced students who want to elevate their language in conversations where you are in an argument or a debate. The great thing about this type of language is that you can probably transfer it quite nicely into language that you use in educational spaces, for example, in university seminars or in high school, or you can use it in the work environment. The first point I want to make is to bullet point your ideas using numbers. This is a great way to organise your thoughts, saying things like first, second, third, etc. You can also use words like primarily, which indicate importance. Giving examples. There are different ways to give examples. You can introduce your examples or you can show your examples and then explain the examples. Now, the things you might want to say are the following. There are many examples of this. For instance, and then state your example. You can also say, in fact, you can find many examples for this in real life. Just think of and then state your example. Another option is to say, there are similar cases such as, and then follow with your example. Another way is to say, so in this example, we can clearly see the effect of. The last one that I just used there, you would say after showing your example. This is an opportunity to explain how the example works in your argument. Next, summarising and linking the argument. You would start with something like, so as you have seen in my argument, explain it, and then say, therefore, and explain your conclusions. Now let's think about what you might want to say when you are listening to the other side, okay? You don't always agree with what they're saying, so how do you deal with this? Well, you can say something like, I see your point, but I think, and then follow with your examples or your argument. You can also say, yes, I understand, but my opinion is that, and then follow with your opinions. Another example is, that's all very interesting, but the problem with that, and then go on to explain why you disagree. Another thing you can say is, I'm afraid I can't quite agree with your point. Another good example is, I think I've got your point. Now, let me respond to it. That's a very diplomatic way of arguing with someone. Finally, we can see what you're saying, but here is my reply. These responses are really, really helpful when you're trying to have a civil and logical argument. Now, when you have finished and you want to conclude your statements, here are a few examples of what you can say. Introduce your conclusion by saying, here are the main points. Or, to recap, the main points are. Or, let's sum up where we stand in this debate. You can also say, let me summarise our position in this debate. Another option is, in summary, I want to point out that and then summarise your ideas. You can also say, let's take stock of where we stand in this situation. Now, take stock. You might hear this quite a lot in English generally, so let me explain. Taking stock of something means to essentially step back from the argument and look at the information that you have and what it means. Okay, it comes from a very specific place. So for example, if you work in a shop and you're selling things, you'll sometimes need to take stock of what you're selling. Basically, that means that you'll be counting everything that you have in your shop and you'll be working out what you have sold and what you still have. That way you can understand how much money you're spending and how much money you are making. Therefore, 
you can tell how well your business is doing. The same principle applies when you take stock of things in general or in an argument. You are analysing all the information that you have in order to figure out how well you are doing. My final bit of advice today is to make good use of adverbs of degree, which are really great for indicating intensity or importance. So these are words like slightly, significantly, particularly, far more, far better. When you use these words appropriately, they can give a lot of dimension to your argument. Well, I hope that those of you who are students or professionals have found this video useful. Let me know if it was indeed helpful in the comments and if you would like to see more of this type of content and I will see you in the next other English video. Thank you for watching, take care and goodbye.